Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Lindsay Nice. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video is going to be my October book haul, and I have a good mix of books that I purchase um, and review books. So we're going to dive into this, starting off with the purchased items, and then I'll get into the review items after. So the first item I have for you guys is my winter quarter um, Sunday school booklet from Union Gospel Press. I have done an unboxing before on their sample kit and I absolutely love their products. Amazing. I have the adult Bible teacher class or adult Bible teacher booklet, I mean. And um, that's because I will start teaching as of 2020 at my church. Um, that is the goal to start helping out with leading and teaching Sunday school. So I did get the adult one. I don't know if my ministry uses the teacher version or not, so if they don't use the teacher version, I'll probably still continue buying buy it any I will probably still continue buying this copy anyway, just because there's extra stuff in here that I think would help me understand scripture even more. So we have this and I have done like I said the video on that. So you can click the on the screen to watch that video or you can just click down below to purchase your own copy of these. So good. You can get the physical booklets or you can get the ebooks. I know they have them on Kindle, Kobo, and I believe iTunes. So the link and information will be down below for you guys. But this is the first item that I have. Next is a book that I was gifted from my mom. I actually own a copy of this book, but I'm going to give my copy away and keep the copy she gave me. And that's the Hannah Anointing by Michelle McLean Walters. You guys know how I feel about her. I love every last one of her books. Um, her books are amazing. She has Esther. She has Ruth. She has Anna and Deborah. Um, I feel like there's another one that I can't think of right now. But she has Hannah, and she's coming out with one on Sarah next year, which I'll definitely be getting that as well. But we have a copy of this, so I will have another one to give away soon. Next, we have some stuff from Our Daily Bread. Um, I got both of these um, from the Our Daily Bread when they send the little things in the mail, and I filled them out. So the first thing I got was the 90-day devotion, which came with a little notepad as well. The notepad just looks like this. Real simple notepad. And then you get the Faith 90 Day Devotions compiled by Dave Brennan. I'm not sure if this is like the one that I already own because they have one. So if this is like the one I own already, I will be giving this one away. But if it's different, I'll keep it because I love good devotionals. So we have this and I just really love the design on that. The next one I have is a DVD study actually from Our Daily Bread. And um, this is Praying with Jesus by James Bank. He is the author of Praying the Prayers of the Bible, which I do own that book. This is a six-session DVD, if I'm not mistaken, yes. The sessions are Abba, Father, Declaring Dependence, Praying the Prayers of the Bible, Sit, Stay, and Pray, Giving the Gift of Prayer, and Praying with Jesus. So, this is all about prayer. I am recently just been on a kick with learning more about prayer. I'm actually doing some books for this month on prayer, so... We have this, and I'm probably going to watch it this month. We'll see. I'll probably try to sneak this in to watch this month. Okay, so moving on, I have some books that I purchased from my library's local book sale. Local book sale? My local library's book sale. So my library has a book sale twice a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. And the one in the spring wasn't that good. I did get some good books, but um, I'm not sure if I shared it with you guys on this channel or not, but... Even if I did, didn't, I can't remember which books I got, like all of the books. Um, but I think I did share it with you guys. If I can find that video, I'll leave a card up above for you guys to check that out. But um, I went this time, and it wasn't a lot of like secular books that I found that I was looking for, but I did find some good steals for Christian books. So the first two um, are kind of like standalones in a sense. So this first one is called Zipporah, Wife of Moses, and it's by Merrick Halter. And this is basically the story, a biblical fiction story on Zipporah, who is the wife of Moses, pretty much. Um, this, the way I found this was definitely a God thing, because I was browsing, and I came across the side, like the spine, and I wasn't going to pick it up, but something said, go back and look. And when I looked at it, I said, hmm, Zipporah sounds familiar. Um, I pulled it out and then I realized it was the wife of Moses so I thought I would grab it um, and this is basically just telling kind of her story um, as the wife of Moses so pretty much this is a beat up copy you guys can see really beat up um, on the sides and stuff yellowed edges on the page but it doesn't bother me I'm excited to get into this 
I will say one thing about this is that the titles have, like, the chapters have titles. So it's not like chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. It's like the actual title names. So that's interesting. Yeah, this book, you can tell somebody had this book for a minute. It's old. But it's mine now, and I'm excited to have it in my collection. So we have this. The next book is one that has been in my thrift books cart for forever. I put it in, I take it out. I put it in, I take it out. This is a part of a series or a companion series. Um, and when I saw this, I was so stoked. Um, they had this in the YA section, and it's going to be R.J. Larson's Prophet. Um, I know that there's also Judge and there is King. And I think, I assume this one is about Deborah. I've heard that it's based on the story of Deborah. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but I'll put on the screen exactly, like, who this story is based off of. But I'm, I'm just excited to actually, like, have this now in my possession because I've been wanting to read this for forever. And I've just been battling back and forth between getting it on thrift books, not getting it, getting it. So I'm glad that I actually found this at my local library. And if I like it, I most likely will pick up King and Judge. I know King is on David and I don't think Judge could be on Samson. Not sure. But it could. But I'm excited to dive into this and see what this book is all about. The next few books are going to be from the same authors. And it was like a major steal that I found these. So I have been hearing people rip about the Left Behind series from Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins for forever. It is a 13 book series and there is also a prequel trilogy which is three books. Um, so I was able to score 14 of the 16 books you guys. Which I mean they're all hardcover. They are a special type of edition. They're the, oh my god, what is this thing called? They're the Crossing Book Club edition books, and I mean, I found them all. I found all the books except the third book, which is the last book in the prequel trilogy, and the last book in the actual series, so I'm excited to dive in. So I'm going to start off with the trilogy since I have those only two books. So the first one is going to be The Rising, The Antichrist is Born, and this is a part of the before they were left behind trilogy um it's the prequel basically to the series i'm not sure if i'm supposed to read this first and then left behind or read left behind first and then read this because i know sometimes prequels are normally meant to be read after you read a series so i don't know but we have this and um these covers are amazing they're beautiful and i think they did such a beautiful job in creating these covers and i'm just i love the color schemes like so pretty definitely expect some book to make up some book to make up tutorials on these and I know I'm still I know guys you guys are still waiting for me to start that series like I said I'm gonna be doing Delilah by um Angela Hunt as a first book I just I'm debating on how I want to do that look because it's purples and greens so I'm debating on that but hopefully before the end of the year we can start this series up but these books will be included in my series but um yeah we have this is the first book and the second book in that trilogy is going to be the regime evil advances and this is the second book in the before they were left behind prequel series which i can't wait to read and there is a third book but like i said i don't own it but um again gorgeous colors gorgeous images and everything and then we get into the Left Behind series, and I have 12 of the 13 books, you guys, so bear with me. The first one is going to be Left Behind, a novel of Earth's last... A novel of the Earth's last days, excuse me, I had to look at that real quick. But, um, again, by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. Aren't these colors gorgeous? You guys can tell me these colors are not gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But, um, yeah, we have the first book. The second book is Tribulation Force, the continuing drama of those left behind. And I love the combination of red and purple on this cover. Just like... <sighs> yeah, just know. This this entire book series will probably be included in my book to make up series. Because this these covers are just gorgeous. But we have this one. Second one. The third book is one that I always say wrong. I don't know if it's Nikolai, Nikolai, whatever. But um, it's The Rise of the Antichrist. This is book three. Book four is probably my favorite, 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 favorite cover. Just because I love the color combination of the green with, like, the teal. And it's going to be So Harvest, The World Takes Sides. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous colors. I just... Spring vibes all the way. Spring, I'm thinking, like, an emerald. Not even an emerald. Like, a teal smoky eye with some lime green underneath. Ugh. Gorgeous. Y'all yeah, gonna see. I'm... I got y'all. I, I got y'all. But um, this cover, again, I love it so much. 
book five i actually have a large copy of book five and book seven which i found um i did find like the same small sizes but these were just too pretty to pass up so i got the large size don't know why but um book five is apollyon the destroyer is unleashed and this one is definitely larger um and it has some foiling on it here so i think it's really nice but this is definitely um creepy creepy -esque to me just 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 a little bit but um we have this one Book six is called Assassins, Assignment, Jerusalem, Target, the Antichrist. And that sounds like it's going to be really, really good. Um, I do know that there is a movie based off of this series, so I'm thinking about watching the movie first and then reading the books. Who knows? Um, if you guys have read the books and watched the movie, tell me in which order you think I should do that. Should I read the book first or should I watch the movie first? Let me know. Um, actually, just click the eye on the screen. I'll probably throw a poll up there for you guys to tell me. So, yeah. But we have book six. Book 7, like I said, is another one of those larger covers, and this is The Indwelling, The Beast Takes Possession, and this is another cover that I just love. Again, this one has foiling, it has like that royal blue, but um, the blue and the yellow, I die. Gorgeous. And you get like a hint of green throughout, so I just think it's a really nice combination. Book 8 is going to be The Mark, The Beast Rules the World. Book 9 is Discretion, Antichrist Takes the Throne. Book 10 is called The Remnant, On the Brink of Armageddon. Book 11 is called Armageddon, The Cosmic Battle of the Ages. And I love the horses on this cover. I just, I love how they're blue with the red background. I love red and blue. I like specifically cobalt blue. That's my type of blue, excuse me. But, um, gorgeous covers. And the 12th and final book that I own, but, um, there is a 13th book, is Glorious and, I'm sorry, Glorious Appearing, The End of Days. And, I mean, it's white. Like, it's funny how the entire series covers are, like, black, and then this one is white. Just gorgeous. And again, this is the Crossing Book Club edition that I own, so I was so lucky to, like, score all these at my local library book sale. And they normally sell um, hardcover books, I think, five for three or four dollars or something like that. Um, they're, they're really good deals. Really good deals at my local library. Okay, so moving on, I have two children's books. These books were sent to me for review to read and review with my son um so the first one is called scarlet spectacles a cheerful choice for a happy heart by Jeanette, sorry janet Surrett, illustrated by shane crampton and it's basically about a little girl with glasses and i have glasses and i have tons of glasses and i thought it was super cute so i really got it for me to read but my son actually likes the illustrations in the book so <laughs> we're gonna read it together we haven't read it yet but um the illustrations in it are just so cute like her hair she kind of like reminds me of myself with my hair sometimes, you know, just saying, but we have this. This is from B&H Kids, so we have that. The next book is also from B&H Kids, and this is a part of the Slugs, Bugs, Slugs and Bugs series that is by Randall Good Game. I always want to call him Randall Goodman, but it's Good Game, and my son owns the other two books. So these are the two books that are currently out. Well, they're all out now, but these are the two my son has. He's really a fan of this one. We enjoy this one. We're actually going to be getting this one no this month in November. But this one is called The Society of Extraordinary Raccoon Society, um, The Secret Meeting. I know that just sounded weird because it's the Society of Extraordinary Raccoon Society. Yeah, you guys see the title. But um, what I like about these books is that, one, they're easy and simple to read. Um, my son in school is learning sight words and things like that. I teach him sight words. So I can read certain things to him, and he'll be able to pinpoint words and spell the words and things like that. And um, the artwork is amazing, of course. I love the illustrations. And I love that, though they're cute little small reads for children, they're, they're always based off of a scripture. And what I mean by that is, at the end of every, at, uh, literally at the end of all of these books, there is a scripture. Um, so this book is based off of Proverbs 22 and 9, which says, a generous person will be blessed. So I'm guessing it's about being generous. Um, I know the one on boasting is going to be interesting. You guys can see it here. I'll, of course, haul that in my November haul. But my son really enjoys these books. I enjoy them with him. Like I said, the illustration and the artwork is fun. They're not really long stories, so you're going to breeze through them. And um, we actually do these for his homework because he does get daily homework for both math and reading, in which he has to read every day for at least 10 minutes. And then he has to do math for at least five minutes a day, be it flashcards, addition, subtraction, or whatever. So um, this will probably be read today, actually, because he has to do homework tonight. <laughs> so... We have this. Okay, so now moving on to the rest of my review books. I'm going to start off with my 
fiction first and then go into the non-fiction at the end so i think i'm gonna have timestamps down below so you guys can get to whichever ones you prefer um i know some people prefer fiction and then some people just prefer strictly non-fiction books i'm a, a fiction lover i love reading books i love escaping into a new world and um things like that i'm gonna do a whole video on how i read so much and how i plan my reading out in my days and how i got into reading because a lot of people ask me about that and i've always been into reading since like daycare um and then when i got into middle school i i was grateful enough to go to a charter school that was really really well rounded and they were set on you doing those dares which is drop everything and read they were set on you learning the electives and the arts and crafts so i went to a really great charter school um my charter school is still around but they're under a different school now and they're not the same as it was when i was there um so yeah but reading has always been something that has been a part of my life and it definitely helps me out when i'm stressed or whatever um and i know someone is going to take that out of context i'm a christian yes christians get stressed Christians get angry. Should we? No. Obviously, we shouldn't because the word says that we should not. We don't need to be, but we do. We're going to leave it at that. I just had to state that because I know when I say some, sometimes when I say certain things, people tend to take it and run with it. So I like, I'm going to have to start explaining some of the comments that I say. But um, reading has always been something that I've enjoyed. I can escape into a new world, become a new person in a sense, like a character and stuff like that. So I have a stack of books here. I'm missing two books. Um, it's one book, but it's two copies of that book, which will probably come in November. So I'm not gonna talk about that book now. But let me fix myself in this chair. But um, the first one is gonna be Sojourner by Jonathan Boykett. Jonathan Boykett. I think that's how you say her name. I'm probably saying it wrong. I hope I'm not. But this is the third book in the Tales of Fay Raven series. And oh my God, I love it so much. Um, I can't remember what I gave this. You guys can watch my wrap up. Uh, my November reads which includes my October wrap-up but this is book three in the series and I read it I enjoyed it it was amazing I love this world like I said previously in the videos I don't know if this is about fairies or not I'm assuming it's about fairies because of how it's written but then the way it's written you never know but this cover stunning and the fourth book comes out next year and I'm kind of hurt because I'm not ready for it to end but it's amazing it's it's Christian fantasy and it's not like hardcore epic Christian fantasy. It's not going to be hard for you to get into if you're looking into diving into the fantasy realm. I think it's great to read um, and it definitely does have some scriptures thrown in here and there. So I enjoy this book and I got this sent to me from the publishing company for a review because I did a review with the Block Tour Company. The Block Tour Company is called Prism Book Tours. Don't quote me on that. It'll be linked down below. But um, they do a lot of like fictional books they have some non-fiction but most of the time it's fictional books and majority of their fictional books are either going to be clean contemporary romances or they're going to be christian based books so i got this from them but i was sent this book from the publishing company um so yeah we have this book as the first one the next book is another book that i read and i loved and that's gonna be the last man at the end by r william bennett <sighs> i adore this book if you haven't seen my reading vlog go watch it like this book was everything and more. It is basically a biblical fiction retelling, in a sense, of the guy named Simon that helped Jesus carry his cross to his crucifixion. And it is beautifully written. It is amazing. It is a small, tiny read. I'm, I love this so much. I love this so much. Just watch my reading vlog. We're going we're gonna to move forward. The next book I was sent from the actual publicist for this author, and it is The Shaft by Scott B. Delaney. This, okay, I'm going to try to remember this off the top of my head again, but I mentioned this in my November read. So, if I can remember without looking at the back, this is a Christian thriller suspense about a secret society that is trying to, I think they're killing off believers. <laughs> It's something like that where they're killing off believers um, and <laughs> I'm going to read the back because yeah. Okay, so basically it is December 2017. A sweeping religious movement is gaining traction in the world. Spiritual leaders are diligently spreading the word of God. And then you have liberal factions, which are the pharmaceutical and scientific developments that create a secret society with a dark mission, which is to thwart the group's cons conservative impact on what society considers to be morally acceptable so you have a secret society out to stop the word of god being spread because with the word of god being spread obviously scientists and those who work in pharmaceutical fields they believe otherwise they believe in other things so we have that it deals with 
killings and assassins and it sounds really epic and hardcore and like it's going to be a really good suspense so i'm really interested in reading this i will be doing a reading vlog for this because i don't read many many supernatural um thrillers like at all thrillers suspense yeah you, you guys know that is not my thing i have a stack of books so i'm thinking i'm gonna just spend a month and just like read some thrillers and suspense novels and let you guys know my thoughts but i will have a reading vlog for this coming soon hopefully this month in november the next four books i got from ambassador international which is a publishing company that i work with to do reviews so the first one i read is going to be just one touch by cynthia goyang cynthia connor goyang i don't know why i was saying her last name backwards but um this is a biblical fiction retelling of the woman with the issue of blood and this was beautifully written i believe i gave this four stars and um, i enjoyed it again you could watch my november reads to check out my wrap up about this book or you can just click down below to get my review this was really beautifully written i enjoyed it enough but i guess because i'm a super major fan of tessa this book only got four stars out of me um i think if i would have read this first before reading tessa it would have gotten a five star rating but this was still a good good read and um i just enjoyed all of the stuff that took place in this book i do recommend this if you guys are looking for a retelling of i, I don't know why i'm saying retelling I don't know why I call them retelling, but if you're looking for a biblical fiction story based on The Woman with the Issue of Blood, this was actually enjoyable enough to read. And it's a small book, not too big, if you guys can see, but um, we have that. Another book that I already read from the same company is going to be The Heart Changer. This is by Yarm Del Bocio, and this was a middle grade biblical fiction, and this is my first foyer, foyer? This was my first attempt at middle grade biblical fiction, and um, I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. This was really, really good. It's based off of the little girl that is mentioned in Second Kings chapter 5, and I enjoy this. This does talk about Naaman, who was the commander of the Syrian army, and yeah, it was actually really good to see a little girl who's 12 years old come to her own faith and belief in God, not relying on her parents, as well as helping adults come to the faith. And, you know, the Bible always talks about how children, how we should be childlike, and this really just reminds you why you should be childlike. As an adult, 28 years old, I thoroughly enjoyed learning from a 12-year-old in this story. Beautifully written. Definitely recommend it. Next, we have To Comfort a King by Debbie Gilliland. This is basically a biblical fiction story on Abishag. And Abishag was technically the last wife of King David. They basically got her to marry King David to warm up his bed during his last days because he was dying and he could not stay warm. So they basically got her to have sex with him, which I didn't get why they just didn't use his wife for that. But yeah, I'll never understand Bubba era um, that whole time. But this is her story, and what interests me is because I read um, The Heart of a King by Jill Eileen Smith, and Abishag was in that with her story. And um, it was basically about four wives of King Solomon. And to learn that Abishag was originally the first one of the wives of King David who then married King Solomon was interesting. So I wanted to read this because it's a lot more thicker and it has more information on Abishag herself. So I'm excited to dive into this. The next book is going to be Blood Moon Redemption. This is by du Judy Ducharme or Ducharme. I'm going to say du Judy Ducharme. I'm probably saying it wrong. I don't know. But this is a futuristic suspense thrillery kind of fantasy story it's a mix of everything because it takes place over the course of multiple years you have 1493 1494 1949 um <laughs> 1950 1967 1968 in present day it takes place in different locations it's like the states and in israel it sounds really good if you want to check out my november tbr or my november reads and studies because i talk about it in that video i just it's an interesting story and it's about blood moon jewels that's yeah i'll leave the goodreads link down below so you guys can check that out because i'm gonna do a horrible um job of explaining this but it really sounds interesting to me so i'm definitely planning on reading it this month but we'll see but this is the last book i believe i got from ambassador international the next book i got from rebel and that's going to be deadly deceit by natalie walters and this is the second book in the harvard secrets series trilogy i don't know um but the first book if i'm not mistaken was called living lies i had an opportunity to request the first book but i didn't and now i have the second book which is probably a little stupid so i'm gonna get the ebook of the first book and if i like it i'll buy the first book but um yeah so 
all that I know is that this is suspense. I didn't get a chance to read the synopsis and the November reads and studies, so I'll do that now. So on the back, it says, Welcome back to Walton, Georgia, where everyone knows your name, but no one knows your secret. Independent and tenacious journalist Vivian DeMarco is back in Walton, Georgia for one reason, to do her job and get out. When her boss suddenly dies under suspicious circumstances, Vivian's only hope for finding the truth and the next big story is small-town law enforcement's lanky poster boy, Deputy Ryan Frost. But the deeper they dig, the more twisted the truths become. False leads, incriminating emails, and someone, call, and someone called the Watcher force Vivian to fight for answers and for her life. So, it sounds interesting. It's romantic suspense. I'm excited to dive into this. You guys know how I feel about suspense and thriller. Do I have to keep saying it? No. So, just pray that I, I can get through these books. I'm going to pray that these are really good. And I'm probably, depending on how I feel reading the first five chapters, I may have to get the audiobook versions of these if possible because I don't know how I'm going to feel. But we have this book. The last two fictional books are the same book, same copy. One I got from the publishing company and one I got from the publishing... Okay, so it's weird. I got an email from Bethany about this book and accepted it because I was like, yes, I want a copy of it. But then I also joined a blog tour, which was doing a, you know, a blog tour on this book and got accepted to it. So I have a copy of that. So I have two copies. And um, one of these copies I will be giving away, but I'm working on something that I think I want to do for around Christmas, which I'll talk about. But the story is The End of the Magi <laughs> by Patrick W. Carr. Yes. Two copies of this book. I know we have problems, but um, I'm excited. So this is biblical fiction based off of the time of Daniel, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's around the time of the prophet Daniel when he called, um, I guess, a group of men to do a countdown calendar until the arrival of the Messiah. Um, and it follows one of the Magi or the Magus, Magi. I don't know if they're called Magi or Magi. Tell me if you I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. But um, it's about a Magi named Myrad and his journey. And it sounds good. Um, The cover is dope. <laughs> dope. Makes me really interested. I do have two copies, though, like I said. So, real quickly, I'm going to talk to you guys about what I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking about doing book boxes. And what I mean by that is I'm going to, in the book box, throw in a DOI mug. I'm going to throw in a DOI shirt and one copy of a book. Because I have so many books, and as much as I want to do giveaways, it's kind of hard to keep up with the giveaways a lot. And I have a bunch of books just sitting in the corner to give away. So I'm going to probably do some fictional books, and then I'm going to do a book box for um, just regular old nonfiction books, depending on how many nonfiction books I have. Um, and in that, I'll throw either one or two books in the box with a DOI mug as well as a DOI shirt um, and yeah I'm not sure which shirt I'm gonna do if I'm gonna let you guys pick I'm still working out everything so I'm gonna put a poll up here I don't know if it's gonna be on this side or this side whichever side it is click the eye and let me know if you guys are interested in the books in the book box it would be a total of $40 that includes shipping a book um, a shirt and a mug I will probably throw some extra stuff in there like bookmarks because I have a ton of bookmarks as well I just have a lot of goodies just just sitting in my room and they need to go because they're taking up space <laughs> so um that's what I'm working on I briefly told my mom about it earlier and she said go for it so I'm definitely looking into doing that but I want to make sure it's something that you guys are interested in doing or getting receiving if that makes sense so yeah but we have two copies of this beauty so moving on to my Christian nonfiction books Okay, so the first one is going to be Unbraided by Carla Monterosa. I did talk about this in my November reads and studies for my wrap up. I read this. It was really good. It's about sexual abuse and how she overcame it. Um, and it was a really interesting read. I gave it four stars and I enjoyed it enough. I'm definitely going to reread this because I really want to get more interactive with all of the things in here. Um, she has a lot of like contemplation journaling portions in here. She really talks about, you know, scripture. And as much as I said... See, now that I'm thinking about it, I might give this five stars. I'm, I'm going to have to reread it to see. We'll see. I'm going to have to reread this to see. Because, like I said, when I was reading it for the, the review, I wasn't able to do, like, my usual underlining and things like that. But we'll see. I'm going to do a actual review on this book separately once I reread it and get in depth. Because now I'm thinking that it should be a five star instead of, a, instead of a four star rating. 
we're gonna move on. The next two books are going to be from B&H, because you guys know I'm a part of the B&H blogger program. So the first one is a devotional. Actually, they're both devotionals. You guys know how I feel about devotionals, right? Someone asked me to share my devotional collection. And um, it would kind of be... I'm going to do it. It's going to be embarrassing. I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> but I have way too many devotionals. Um, but this one is called The Insanity of Sacrifice. It's a 90-day devotional by Nick R Ripkin. And um, it's basically... Okay, I'm going to read the back. It says, 90-day devotional to help you align your heart with God, seeing the role sacrifice plays in the life of every follower of Jesus Christ. So it's a devotional all about sacrifice. And I mean, who doesn't want to read a devotional about that? I do. I don't like sacrifice. I hate sacrificing. <laughs> like, it bothers me. Let me let me rephrase that. I don't hate sacrificing. I know that it is a part of the walk in following Christ. Um, and it's even more so going to be something that I have to deal with because I am now an evangelist and I actually have a specific position within the kingdom of God. But no one likes sacrifice being truthful. So I thought this would be a great one for me to read just to get myself going not like a pick-me-up or anything but um just to help me really fully understand sacrifice i mean we all say we understand sacrifice and of course the bible says that we have to suffer like christ we have to suffer with christ for the sake of christ and all that great stuff but do we like to suffer and sacrifice no not really but um this just sounded really good so i requested it and i got it so we have that the second devotional i got from bnh is called new every morning it's created and compiled by Phil Barefoot. It's 365 days of worship, and I'm here for praise and worship. I know my sis, Steph, you can click the eye to go to her channel. Um, she had a month in which she was learning more, I believe, about praise and worship, and I thought that was so interesting. And when I saw this book, I was like, hmm, I should probably do that too, because I'm all right now, I'm really just on a prayer kick. And um, my church is actually having a revival this month, a two day revival, and um, for me personally with where i am in my relationship with god he's really been calling me to prayer a lot more heavily and really just learning to worship him unfiltered um and what i mean by that is i mentioned this before in a video how i get caught up sometimes when i'm in church um and i mean the spirit of god can be heavy and I'm, it's not that i'm caught up it, it's hard to explain like sometimes i get caught up to the point where i feel like i can't freely worship and some sundays i'm good i'll praise and worship all day but um i want to get to that point where my worship is unfiltered where my worship is free to move about the way it wants to move and um i just thought this would be a good one to really just dive in on worship and um yeah i just i like the title new every morning and oh they're pretty short too they come with prayers. I didn't open this book when I got it, you guys, so, like, I, I didn't know anything about the inside. I will say the font is extremely tiny. <laughs> Super tiny font. But, um, I kind of like the way this is set up. So, I'm interested. What I like is that this includes two separate days for Saturday and Sunday. I know in my other devotion, The God is Faithful from Thomas Nelson, they do their Saturday and Sunday together and call it the weekend. But in this, they have it separate. So I think that's great. And I'm excited. So it says it's a unique and dynamic devotional compiled by Dr. Phil Barefoot and written by 118 premier worship pastors, ministers of music, and Christian university professors across America. Um, each devotion presents a fresh and inspiring thought in scripture for the day designed to refresh renew and recharge the spiritual life of each reader the book is designed for private devotionals choirs worship teams and small group studies as a private devotional the reader can use the book as a traditional daily devotional as a leader of a ministry group the book can be used on wednesdays and sundays to offer specific insight and wisdom into the discussion of worship and our role in worship that sounds good. So I'm really excited to dive into this because I'm all for it. And if you guys don't know, I recently joined my church's um, praise and worship team. I have been slacking off to the point where I kind of like try to hide away from it. But I know that I can't keep doing that. I know my bishop is going to shout me out soon again for doing that. Um, for the past two, three Sundays, I haven't been up there singing. Only because I've, the last two Sundays I've actually been busy doing things. Um, but starting next Sunday, I'm going to get back into doing it. And um I'm nervous to, to start singing again. It has been years, about over 10 years since I sung. <laughs> um, but I enjoy singing. Singing is something that I do enjoy. Um, so I thought this would be, you know, 
great. Uh, that's it. So we're gonna move on to the next book. I have this book from Baker's Book, and honestly, I don't remember requesting this. Um, I don't know if this was a mistake, so I have to check in my email and see if this was a book that I personally requested. Because I feel like I requested another book, and they sent me this one by mistake. So I have to personally check because I do not remember but um it sounds interesting nonetheless it's called christianity for people who aren't christians uncommon answers to common questions by jane emery white and is basically questions that non-christians ask <laughs> basically so like is there a god why do the life death and resurrection of jesus matter why is there and one question a lot of non-believers ask is why is there so much suffering in the world and i think that's a good question that even some christians honestly ask so that's a question um why do christians think there is only one way to know god how do i reconcile the bible's picture of christ's followers with the actual christians i know who have disappointed me wow so this is going to be a whirlwind of a book and um it goes through different things i'm going to try to get to the chapter sections so it talks about the god who is there um what kind of god he is they do jesus 101 what the message is um which i'm assuming the message is the gospel the book which is the bible the church unchristians and the next steps for Christ people who are not christian so it sounds interesting i just can't remember if i requested this one or not i probably did don't remember i'm gonna check my emails so yeah moving on the last four books in this haul i probably should have did two separate videos but no I think from now on, I'm going to do two separate book hauls, depending on how many books I have, because this is insane how long this video is. This video, as I'm sitting here recording it, is about 41 minutes. Um, by the time I edit it, it'll probably be about 40 minutes or so, because including my intro and outro, y'all pray for me. Um, the last four books are from Revel. Um, so this one is 100 Days of Affirmation for Your Wife. I'm sorry, 100 Words of Affirmation Your Wife Needs to Hear by Matt Jacobson. And then I have the one for the husbands which is by lisa jacobson and they did have another book before which i think was a hundred ways to love your wife a hundred ways to love your husband i have that duo so now i have the affirmation booklet to go with it um so i'm excited to dive into this the last two books are going to be um sort of they're pretty much short devotionals I, i'm going to call them short devotionals in a sense because that's what they they look like to me um there are how many in here i'm gonna check to see 90 devotions in each booklet i'm just looking to see if i'm right yeah so 90 so this one is words of comfort for women by caroline larson um and it's just words of comfort <laughs> and then this one is words of hope for women which is on hope and i thought they were super cute with their little um floral watercolor prints they're just really cute and again you guys know i love devotionals devotionals are really useful um, I'm actually working on writing a devotional book, which I'm super excited about writing that. I actually should have started um, because November is NaNoWriMo. I have been working on two books. Actually, I've been working on like more than two books, but I've been working on two Christian based books for almost a year and a half now. Um, and I've been slacking off, but I'm going to definitely work on the book. I think this month for NaNoWriMo, I've already missed four days because today is the fourth day. Um, it's November 4th as I'm recording this video. You hopefully will see this tomorrow, which is November 5th. Um, but I'm hoping to this week, since my son has no school Thursday and Friday and they're out Monday for Veterans Day, I'm hoping that I can knock out some time to just sit for maybe three hours a day and work on that book. Um, it's a devotional book and I'm really, really excited about it. I have a lot of stuff, like I've been saying, in store that I've been working on, but I'm nervous. So, yeah, we have these two books. But um, that is it. That's everything. As I said, next year, I'm going to separate how I do my book videos. Um, my book hauls will probably be broken into two separate videos. Um, and then also my November reads and studies, as well as my wrap-ups, will be two separate videos starting in January 2020. Um, I'm going to just let this year play out the way it is <laughs> and move on. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any of these books that I just hauled, let me know. Um, again, don't forget to take the poll and let me know if you guys are interested in a book box. It, like I said, it would be $40. That includes shipping. You would get a book or two, depending. I might do two books. I may do one. But there will definitely be one book, a DOI coffee mug, um, a DOI shirt. And I think I might make a shirt specifically for the book box. 
I don't know. I'm just, I'm thinking about it. So let me know if it's something you guys are interested in. Just click yes or no um, in the poll, and I'll give more information on that when I can. I want to do it for December, but if I can't, it'll definitely be done in January, depending on how many got, how many of you are interested in that type of thing. So, yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, rating, commenting, subscribing, and all that great stuff. If you are subscribed, click the little bell to stay notified. If you're not subscribed, why not? You should join the family. I love my family. I love my DIY sisterhood. I have some men who follow my channel, so thank you guys. See you as well. But, um, join the family. I mean, we're awesome here. But, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!